friends, it's Allie, and let's chat about hashtag writer goals. I've mentioned multiple times in the past that while I think that NaNoWriMo and things like it are great, I do think they can also very easily lead to burnout if you don't already have a pre-existing set of structure or goals in your writing outside of those months. I myself have fallen into that trap uh, many, many times, so in an effort to avoid that, I thought that I would share with you today my goals looking forward in my writing to August and beyond. With Camp NaNoWriMo now done, I am just about halfway through my second full draft of my novel The OS. And as I often do, fresh off of a nano success, it was tempting at first to think, well, if I could do this much in this one month, then I'll just do that same thing again this month, and then voila, I'll be done. To which I say, great idea, Ali, except that it's not, and then it's not gonna work, and here's why. When I specify that I'm working on my second full draft of this novel, that's intentional. It's because I have actually written the first half of this book four times now, except this second half that I'm about to embark on, that I've only written once in the first draft that I wrote a year ago. That means that the prose is messier, that there are whole sections that I haven't even written yet, and a whole slug of other messes that I don't even want to think about right now. So sure, I was able to get 40,000 words in just the month of July, but that was because all of my previous drafts were working for me. I had so much stuff to pull from and there were entire writing sessions that were almost entirely copy-pasted from previous drafts. This second half, however, it is working against me. It is my enemy. So when I factor in that a lot of the second half of this book is going to be fixing things from previous drafts, completely rewriting things from previous drafts, and of course actually first drafting the things that I haven't written at all yet, I think it's fair to say that it's going to take me a significantly longer amount of time to get through the second half of this book than it took me to get through the first. So that was the first thing that I took into consideration in creating my writing goals for August and beyond, but it also touches on something that I think a lot of writers maybe don't always think about. I and many other writers are drawn to word count goals because they feel like the smallest common denominator of writing. For example, another popular type of goal, a chapter goal, could be entirely different depending on if you're somebody who writes chapters about 1,000 words long or 13,000 words long. But words, no, words are all the same. If you tell somebody that you got 13,000 words in one day, that means the same thing as that 13,000 word chapter author saying that they got one chapter done. Everybody knows what you're talking about. But just like two authors might have entirely different ideas on how long a chapter should be, I feel like word count is not actually as set a measure as we make it out to be. I don't know about you, but 50,000 words of a rushed zero draft look a lot different for me than 50,000 words of a polished clean draft. I'm willing to bet that they probably look different for you too, though I can't imagine maybe you are somebody who takes a long time to get through a zero draft because you're thinking about world building and outlining and things like that, but then the actual first draft is super easy because you have all of this stuff to fall back on, or maybe it's completely the opposite. I don't know, every writer's different. But I do think we have to understand that word count isn't actually as set a measurement as we think it is. The relative time commitment and creative energy per word is going to be different depending on where you are in the process, so you should set your goals accordingly. Another thing I had to figure out in setting my goals for August and beyond is where and how I can fit writing into my pre-established schedule. For example, saying I'll be done with this book by November is not really a crazy goal on paper, it's giving myself even more time to get the same amount of words that I got done in a month. But when you consider that I have work responsibilities, life responsibilities, and just other recreational things coming up in those months, it starts looking a lot less feasible. Just because I am fully capable of pushing myself to get it done in that time doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best thing for my writing goals or the structure that I'm trying to set by making writing a habit. Of course, I'm always up for a challenge. I mean, my love for all things NaNoWriMo is evidence of that, but I don't think that that level of commitment to my story is actually sustainable for me more than three times out of the year. Of course, that's very personal to my current schedule and where I'm currently at with my writing. If you are a career author who is on contract to get out your 15th book at the end of the year, your writing schedule is going to look very different from mine. Alternatively, if you're a very new writer who is just trying to learn what the heck a character arc is, you might be taking a little bit longer or a little bit less time. I used to write faster than I do now. In coming up with my writing goals for these upcoming months, I've had to assess where I can and cannot fit writing into my schedule. So that is also what I urge you to do. Put the time in that you can and release the time that you can't. Which brings me to my final consideration for creating my writing goals and also my final tip for you if you are also trying to 
create a goal post Camp NaNoWriMo. This is my favorite one, and it's also the most important one, even though it was something I had not really considered for myself until very recently. Goals are meant to be met. And I know what you're thinking, well, what did you just say? It's blasphemy. But I don't know if you're like me, but I was always the type of person growing up that would set my goals too high on purpose. My logic was that if I had this unattainable goal ahead of me, I would be super motivated to get work done because I had to get work done if I wanted any hope of achieving this goal that I already knew that I couldn't achieve. I was a very smart child, as you can tell. Believe it or not, this strategy actually helped me quite a lot in my school days, but now I think it's just a huge bummer. Breaking news, feeling like you've failed sucks, and it's even worse when you're the jerk who set yourself up to fail in the first place. It's like being the underpaid employee and the crappy boss all at once. The idea that you're meant to set goals that you can actually feasibly reach is something that I had not even considered until recently. Looking forward, I want to start setting goals for myself that are thoroughly manageable. Maybe not easy per se, though I do think that it makes a whole lot more sense to set a goal that you know you can meet than one that you know you can't. So no, I will not be trying to finish my book in the next 30 days, though that would make for some pretty good vlog content, but instead, my goals for August and the rest of 2021 are as follows. Firstly, I want to keep writing most days of the week. I don't really care if I write every single day of the week, and I don't really care how many words I get on those days. But a big part of my healthier outlook on writing recently has come from making writing a habit and something that I do more often than not. And so that is something I'm willing to put the work into to keep that habit going strong. Secondly, I would like to finish this book before the end of the year. That might seem like a long time to get 50,000 words, but it took me a whole heck of a lot longer to get the first draft of this book done, so I'm covering all my bases. That wiggle room will also hopefully give me some extra time to work on other projects that I want to work on, because not only is that just more fun, but I found that it's also a useful tool in resetting my writing brain and getting me excited about a project again. Thirdly, I'd like to participate in NaNoWriMo again this year, though I anticipate that I'm going to be a huge rebel and do something that completely breaks every single rule that NaNoWriMo has set. November is a busy month for me this year, so I'm content to just kind of vibe and see where I'm at in the story once we get to November. Additionally, I'd like to use the rest of the year to do some more research on publishing. I know a lot more about the industry now than I did a year ago and even more than a year before that, but I'm always eager to learn more from the self-publishing process to the whole process of getting an agent and submitting to publishers and all things like that. And finally, and this is only somewhat writing related, I would like to continue posting videos to this channel. As a lot of you guys already know, I took a pretty long and honestly unplanned hiatus from this channel at the start of 2020, only popping back in last summer to announce the fact that I'd finished the first draft of this novel. At the time, I was feeling pretty lost with my writing, to be honest, and also feeling pretty lost with my channel. And those two things kind of converged into an overwhelming need to not do any of it for a bit. Moving forward, I don't know that I can promise like three uploads every week or anything like that, but I can promise to make videos that I'm proud of and to share them with you here. And if that sounds like a plan to you, then it sounds like a plan to me. Honestly, I've been really happy with the response that I've gotten from my last few videos, and I've honestly felt more connected to the writing community in these past few weeks than I have in any year prior. So thanks for that, and that's it. Those are my goals. I'm sure that there are plenty of people who would say that these goals are too vague, or that they're not actionable enough, or that I need to challenge myself more. And to that I say, yeah, probably, but I'm not gonna. But honestly, I've been testing out this thing lately called being nice to myself, and I think I'm gonna see where that goes first. And these are the goals that I feel best represent what I actually want to get out of my writing for the next few months. But enough about me, let's talk about you. What are your goals for the rest of 2021? Let me know in the comments below, or don't, but think about it, maybe? Thanks as always for watching, and I will see you, hopefully, in the next video. Bye!